This is Llama 270B. I used it to build the best open source retrieval augmented generation engine named Llama Banker. This is it running on a single GPU, answering questions, summarizing and analyzing a 300 page annual report, just as well as ChatGPT, but with unlimited tokens for a buck 69 an hour. Since building version 1.0 of GPT Banker, it's been bugging me that I couldn't do the same with open source models. That was until the announcement. Meta had been coding away in the background, building a better Llama. And what's better than one llama? Twins. This should have been easy enough to do. Swap out the models and we're good to go. It wasn't quite that simple though. Let me explain. To get started, I first needed to install PyTorch and a bunch of other dependencies. Easy enough. Grab the command from the PyTorch website and throw it at a command line. But I want to try running the entire app on RunPod. That way I'd have a GPU that's fast enough to run Llama 70B. That would prove to be an absolute headache. While at it, I'm also going to install some other dependencies, including Langchain, Transformers, SciPy, as well as some optimization libs. Turns out I also needed some open source embeddings, so I'll install some libs for that as well. I'm using sentence piece and sentence transformers. More on those in a sec. Rather than going my usual route and relying on Langchain, I decided this time I wanted to do as much as possible with other libraries. So Transformers was big in play here. Bring in auto tokenizer, auto model for causal LM and a new class extremer. Wait till you see this bad boy running. Time to bring in the model. First up, create a new variable called name. This holds the name of the model we're going to be using. Then another variable or token to hold the hugging face access token, seeing as I'm downloading the weights from their repo. Here's where I first ran into trouble. In order to use the original meta weights, you need to be granted access. I did not know this. To get access, you need to go to the meta website, submit your life story, and hopefully they'll accept your legit. Two hours after applying though, I was in. Time to get this model up and running. There's two parts that I need a tokenizer and the model itself. The tokenizer converts raw input strings to unique numerical identifiers, aka numbers, and the model itself. This is where the transformer class came in handy. Aside from the name of the tokenizer, passing cache underscore dia ensures that the model is saved to its specified directory where I have space on the server. I learned this the hard way after downloading 30% of the 150 gigabyte weights and having to start again. Use auth token grants access to the restricted Llama 2 repo. Getting the model up and running follows a similar process to the tokenizer. Pass name, cache dir, use auth token, as well as the torch data type. Now this is a critical part of the whole thing because it is the model. Without it, there's no Llama 2. So I followed the same process outlined in the documentation and that worked about as well as deploying a prod on a Sunday morning after a bender. Using the documentation code, I was getting this weird indexing error. So I tried different versions of Transformers, checked different installations of PyTorch, questioned my existence as a developer. But then I found a thread on GitHub which pointed to the fact that previous versions of the config didn't include the right pad token. I jump into the config, set the pad token to two, and hold my breath. Yeah, nah, that didn't work either. Then, I had a bright idea. Could I find another set of weights that did work? Turns out the upstage weights followed a similar pattern, but they had added rope scaling configuration. But more importantly, they were loading in 8-bit. So I swapped the upstage model name back to Llamas, and boom, we are in business. I think scaling the model across two GPUs had something to do with it because loading an 8-bit reduced the VRAM requirement, allowing me to run the model in a single A180 gigabyte GPU. To test it out, pass a prompt to the tokenizer and send it to the GPU using the model.device attribute. This is where the text streamer came in handy. You can use it to stream the decoded output of the model, which looks slick but I still haven't actually generated anything or passed the text to the model. To do that, I can unpack the inputs and pass it to the model.generate function. At the same time, passing the streamer, use cache and setting the max new tokens to infinite in order to continuously stream output. To decode the output tokens, all I need to do is pass the results of the model.generate function to the tokenizer.decode method. This continuously allows the model to generate a response to the original prompt. Now, I could stop here, the model works. Why mess with it? I should have stopped here, but I did it. Gotta pay the bills, lads. If you love coding and you're not sure where to start, check out my free Python course at go.coursesfromnick.com forward slash Python. But if you're a Python wizard, use YouTube 50 to get 50% off my full stack ML course at coursesfromnick.com forward slash full stack ML. I'm currently adding LLM videos to it. Back to the video. In order to take this one step further, I wanted to use RAG to answer questions. Similar to how I built the OpenAI powered investment banker, I feel that it's only right that we do it with open source models. Should be easy enough, famous last words. Just pass the model to the existing Langchain workflow that I built up in that video and Bob's your uncle. But this went about as smoothly as unicycling up Everest while trying to install TensorFlow. Langchain would just hang when using the agent executor command. So I did what any self-respecting developer would do. With five hours of succession and three minutes of Googling, I found a new library. Well, at least new to me, called Llama Index. It sounded promising, but 
would it get the result I wanted? Would it be the Llama Banker I dreamed of? One way to find out. First things first, install it using pip install Llama index. Then create a prompt using the simple input prompt from Llama index. This allows prompt formatting similar to how prompt templates work in Langchain. While I'm at it, we may as well throw in a system prompt to help guide the model to be ethical, respectful, yada yada. To use the prompt wrapper, we can grab the prompt wrapper and use the format method to complete the prompt. So I'm good with the model itself. It's tested, it works, but I need a way that I can use it with Llama index. Thankfully, there's a class for that. It's easy enough to pass through the model and tokenize it to the hugging face LLM class. While I'm at it, I can also specify the system prompt and the query wrapper prompt as well well as some token parameters. That's the LLME bit of the application done. There's one bit I haven't quite addressed yet. That's handling the document embeddings which are needed for retrieval augmented generation. I had really good results using the sentence transformer model from Hugging Face at work, so I want to use it here as well. There's two classes that I need, the first being Langchain Embedding from the Llama Index Embedding submodule and the Hugging Face Embeddings class from Langchain. I know, I know, I didn't want to use it, but I had to. Once those are loaded, it's easy enough to create an embeddings instance by wrapping the Hugging Face Embeddings inside the Langchain embedding class. Now by default, Llama index is configured to work with OpenAI, but we're building Llama Banker not OpenAI Banker. So I need to switch this out. The way that's possible is by changing the service context for Llama index. The service context class and the set global service context function can be grabbed from Llama index to help with that. The goal here is to tell Llama index to use the model that I loaded from transformers. To this, I can create a new service context and use the from defaults method to specify the LLM and the embedding to use. If you want to use different models, this is where you'd be passing it in. The chunk size here is important. It tells Llama index how to split up the document. A larger chunk size means you're going to get chunkier. Smaller chunk size means you're going to get smaller blocks of text past the model for context. The service context is now created, but this needs to be set so that Llama index recognizes it. That's done by passing the context that was created to the set global service context function. Perfect. Now, how about those documents though? The documentation makes it pretty clear how to load a document using simple directory reader. Testing this out with a PDF was a shocker though. When I queried using this method, it looked like I was skipping pages. To be perfectly honest, I didn't dig into it because I had another idea. First up, install Llama Hub. This opens up a range of other extensions that can be used to extend out Llama Index. My goal was to try to load the PDF directly into the Llama Index Vector Store Indexer and query from that. The Vector Store Index class can be imported from Llama Index. While at it, I'll grab the Download Loader function and Path from Path Lib as well. I'll show why these are needed in a sec. The Download Loader gives access to a bunch of other extensions for use with Llama Index. A quick search shows that PyMu PDF Reader was available for use. So I set this as the argument and created an instance of the reader. Then it's easy enough to load the annual report using the load method. All I have to do is pass through the full path of the annual report and pass the metadata data argument is true. Home stretch now. I need a way to query the documents though, because so far I've just loaded them. This is where the vector store index comes in handy. By passing the documents to the from documents method, I can store the PDF chunks into the vector store. This means I can now query it using the LLM, but would it work better than what I got from Langchain? To test it out, I need a way to query. I can access the index query engine using the index.asQueryEngine method, and all I have to do is use the doc query method, and it's now possible to query using Llama 2 and the annual report. This is it, a big test. If I query what was the FY 2022 return on equity, the model successfully returns the same result as what is shown inside the annual report. I'd call that a win by any measure. Now, I could stop here, but that just wouldn't be me. So streamlined up it is. But this ain't easy to do because we're doing this on what is effectively a Jupyter Notebook server via RunPod. Deployment isn't straightforward, but I want to try anyway, because that's what machine learning is all about. Life learning and loss. Let's start by whipping up a quick stream lit app. Create the title by using st.title and naming it appropriately and create a prompt bar using the st.text input class. This is going to return whatever is stored in it so I can capture the prompt by setting that as a variable. Now I've already written a bunch of code for generation. I can copy that into the app. All I really need to do then is query the engine when there's a prompt. I'll throw the query inside of an if statement to achieve that. Then to run the app, all I need to do is run streamlit run app.py. We're up and running. So if I click this link, uh, uh, um, oh wait. In theory, the app is running locally inside of the Linux server slash Docker container that RunPod creates, but it's not exposed to the net. So grabbing it via the browser is a bit of an issue. And this kind of sucks if I wanted to hand it out to users. Luckily, after a bit of digging and channeling my inner Cisco engineer, I realized I could port forward using the TCP mapping functionality in RunPod. This means I can take this IP and the external port and boom, app is running at last. Success. Now, if I ask her about a summary around the performance of the company, I get nothing. 
that that should work, right? For whatever reason, the app still has issues. The error, thankfully, was one that I did recognize. It looked like a GPU out of memory error, which is absolutely nuts because this exact same code ran inside of a Jupyter Notebook 20 minutes ago. What I did notice, though, was that every time I ran a query via the app, it appeared that the model shards were being reloaded into memory as though it wasn't cached. It turns out that was exactly what was happening. A few forums mentioned that the best way around this was to use the st.cache resource decorator around a function to load a machine learning model. This should prevent Streamlit from attempting to reload the resource into memory. So that's what I did. Prematurely anticipating success, I added two Streamlit expanders to write out the entire response object and also display the source text. Now all that was left to do was see if I sorted out the caching issue. So here goes nothing. I refresh the app. The model looks like it's caching. Then prompt and enter and and Llama Banker lives. Caching using the decorator stopped the model over consuming the GPU memory. But most importantly, check out how flexible and powerful Llama 2 is. I can ask it to summarize the financial performance of the bank, perform entity extraction. Here I ask what the four main departments are and we got the results. I could even ask it to break down the sentiment in the chairman's letter and it looks on point. Well, it was a hell of a ride, but all signs point to huge amounts of promise in the field of open source large language model development. If you wanna see some tests that I did with Falcon 40B, click here.